Well, boo-hoo, my daughter, the little one, she stole my little adapter cord I needed for my microphone, which probably makes a very small difference, but I have a little microphone that I use when I record these, and I can't hook it up to my phone now. Well, it is Saturday morning, the morning when the least people usually log in for the live Bible study because they're probably sleeping. Shame on them. Okay, so, hey, when you get in, hey, there we go. I was gonna say, say good morning, and all these people start saying good morning. Hi, Arla. So, we made it up to Acts 10, verse 27, where uh, Cornelius falls down and begins to worship Peter, and Peter's like, uh-oh, this is awkward. And so he gets him to stand back up again. And he says, hey, I I'm just also a man. And that's just a one final good reminder, not repeating everything from yesterday. But you know what? He's just a man. Peter's just a man. I'm just a man. Billy Graham was just a man. Right? You name it. Just men. Right? That's, we don't worship men. We worship God. And hi to everyone else, Dean and Christy and everyone else who's logging in and saying hi. It's good to hear from, see you guys. All right, so let's move on though. Verse 28, it says, Then he said to him, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to a, one of another nation? But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked then, for what reason have you sent me? So Jesus is, re or Jesus, oh, Peter <laughs> is reminding Cornelius that it's, it's a big deal for Jewish men to be associating in the house of a Gentile. They just didn't do that. What's funny is there's nothing in the Old Testament that would ever forbid that. The Jewish people were supposed to be, in many ways, the exact same thing the church is Today, we are a light to a dark world. And when you light a lamp, you don't hide it under a basket, right? You don't stick it under a bed. You stick it in a high location that will illuminate the dark room. So to the Jewish people, there were all these things in their law, the written law, the Torah, that explained that they were supposed to be a light unto the Gentiles and that they were supposed to welcome in the foreigner and the alien. There were all these provisions where they were supposed to care for and be hospitable to the nations that surrounded them. But they became not. <laughs> they started to think that all Gentiles were dirty and they were unclean and unholy and the Jews are going to heaven. Everyone else was just going to burn. And they had this attitude. They couldn't go into the house of someone who wasn't Jewish. And, you know, the church can get that way. We can get that way. When we start getting so holy that we don't want to associate with other people who aren't as holy as we are. And Peter suffered from that because that was the culture that he was raised in and that was the expectations of the religious people of those days but God is telling him no 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 don't call common what I have called special and holy and good and so he's asking Cornelius what's the deal why did you call for me and so Cornelius said in verse 30 Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. Behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. Now, there's actually a definite article uh, sneakily hidden in there. What's a definite article, right? So there's a the. It's not just your prayers like general prayers. It's not just someone saying, you know, Lord, I want this and I need that. And here, dear God, here I'm checking in again today. But it says the prayer, Acts 10, 31. I believe this is the prayer for salvation. That Cornelius prayed the prayer. He wanted God to finally like, all right, Lord, 
Uh, you've been convicting me. And you know what? God did a similar thing with me. Uh, I really cleaned my life up before I think God got a hold of me and, and got me into a church and got me plugged in with great Bible teachers and all of that. I, I had already been cleaning up my life and it was like a stirring was going on preparing me for what was to come. Uh, I always joke that it's like I quit drinking soon before I turned 21. <laughs> and and I, I was done with 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 partying, I was done with girls, I was done with all of that. And then the gospel got brought into my life. Um, I was raised in the church, but you know, really when it when it became serious to me, and so I think that's something maybe we see with Cornelius. We've been examining Cornelius's salvation over the last few days, talking about how he was giving to the poor. He was fasting. That's today's the first day we hear he was fasting and praying, right? He feared God and tried to live a holy life. And yet again, Acts eleven fourteen, it says that Peter was going to come and bring the words uh, by which you will be saved. Cornelius wasn't saved until after he heard the gospel and, and responded in faith. And so that's the idea here is there's a specific prayer that God is answering. Cornelius was probably drawing closer and closer. Oh God, I want it. But finally... He prays a prayer like, Lord, I know I need to surrender to you and there's something specific you need of me. Let me know what it is. And God immediately answers and sends Peter. And so verse 32 and 3, send therefore to Joppa and call Simon, whose surname is Peter. He's lodging the house of Simon the Tanner by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately and you have done well to come. Now, therefore, we are all present before God to hear the things commanded you by God. And so Peter comes and he brings the gospel. And boom, Cornelius and his whole family are all going to get saved. Um, probably going to save that for next time. But what did we walk away with? Hmm. Well, there's a specific prayer for salvation. And I think that's important. Um, you know, we all ought to be able to answer the question, when were you born again? Now, sometimes it's hard to pin it on a date. I can't pin a date on when I was born again. It's, it's confusing for me because I was brought up in the church. I was brought up uh, with good you know, Christian values and, and I had a reverence for the Bible, um, what I knew. I feel like I knew very little. Uh, I knew a lot of Bible stories, but I didn't know the message of the gospel. When it was brought to my attention as a rebellious teen, you know, well, the Bible says this, so you shouldn't be doing that. I, I confessed, like I knew, like, yeah, like if that's what the Bible says, then I shouldn't be doing it. doesn't mean I stopped right away. Um, but there was definitely a moment where I knew, like, yes, I don't know what all happened leading up to there. How much was God wooing me? How much was the seeds being planted by my family, by the church growing up? But at, there was a definite point where I can say, well, I, I know for a fact, at least at this point, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. And everything changed. Everything changed. And I think that's something uh, that I wish I would see more in Christians in the church today. Can you be saved and not have radical transformation? Well, yes, that's very true because there's multiple exhortations in Hebrews, in 1 Corinthians, elsewhere, where there's a, a, a rebuke even that you're Christians, but you haven't grown, right? That there's a rebuke that, that you're saved, but you don't look like it. And so people can get saved and not look like it. And I always need to remember that, you know, that we're not supposed to judge others and, well, they don't look like they're saved or they look like they are saved because we also know you can look saved and not be saved. We see that in Matthew chapter 7 where Jesus talks about those who are going to say we did cast out demons, did miracles and wonders in your name. And Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. So you can look saved and not be saved. You can look like a unbeliever, but totally be born again. 
But I don't have any personal peace, me, myself, I, about others' salvation when I don't see that transformation. And so that's my desire for you and everyone who's logged in and everyone who's already logged off and everyone in between that we would have a dramatic transformation take place in our lives so that no one would have any doubt about where we're at and that it would be so obvious to the outside world that God is doing something in us. God is doing something in us. What did I read today? Um, was it 1 John 4 or maybe in the Psalms? It was in the McShane reading, but just the idea that God desires to shine through us. That's what he wants to do. And so Cornelius was slowly being brought in, but now the event's gonna happen where he's gonna be born again and we're gonna see the spirit poured out on his whole house and oh, that God would do the same today in our homes, right? That we would see the Holy Spirit working in a tangible, miraculous way that the, there's no explanation. Isn't that great? When God takes losers like us <laughs> and does amazing things, that's good. You see, if you were super awesome at everything, then people would just think it's you. But when God takes normal people and does amazing things, it shows the rest of the world that God is at work in those people. And that's what people need to see. They need to see the power of God. And it's not necessarily through casting out demons or miracle healings or other supernatural things in such a way. But when God transforms a sinner into a saint and when God takes regular people and gives them boldness about sin and salvation, about repentance and God's love, when he gives us that fire inside, it testifies that God is at work amongst us. And that's what this world needs to see. It's just a new demonstration of the power of God in the children of God, building up the church of God. So there you go. Love you guys. I will see you guys Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. back here, verse by verse through the book of Acts. You guys have an amazing weekend. And go to church and bless the people who are there. Don't come just to get filled. Go there showing up expecting to fill. Take care, guys.